Hello, today I'm reviewing the Bolt, the brand new wireless mouse from Fnatic with a claw focused shape. Thank you to them for sending this out and giving me an opportunity to check it out early. My bad on getting this video out a little bit late for you guys. So this is a mouse that's been really interesting for me. I love the design of its shape. It is easily one of the best out there for claw, I think. And as a solid feature set of high performance wireless with decent quality at a moderate weight. But the coating is so bad for my sweaty hands that the mouse is almost unusable after about 30 minutes of sweat buildup. I want to get this out of the way right at the beginning here because this coating is so bad that it colors my opinion about this entire mouse in a way that I have never experienced before. The best way to describe how it feels would probably be a somewhat glossy version of the standard razor coating. They both have that textured PPT plastic feel to them, so it's instantly familiar. But the bolt coating is smoother and shinier to its detriment. Now, I am not much of a fan of the razor finish already. Rubberized coatings are much better for hands as sweaty as mine. So when you start to incorporate the slickness of a glossy coating on top of that, it gets almost unusable for hands that sweat heavily. If you have fairly dry hands, I don't think it's going to be terrible. Still not great, but entirely usable. But for people like me, you will so quickly start to slide around that you're going to have to constantly readjust your grip and fidget just to be able to pick the mouse up properly. And unlike a usual glossy coating, wiping the mouse and your hand down with a towel does not seem to fix it. I was able to use Vaxi's glossy coatings for a bit as long as I wiped everything down frequently, but nothing I have tried so far with the Bolt has worked, which has heavily impacted my experience with a mouse that has been otherwise fantastic in every other regard. All right, now that I got that out of the way, we can talk about the best part about this mouse, the piece that shines in spite of its grip issues, the shape. Instead of copying another mouse design or creating something overly simplistic, Fnatic instead remixed a few tried and true shapes in a way that is distinctly unique, but also familiar. Like I said before, this is a claw focused mouse, so its highest point is towards the back and the sides flare out as they approach the rear end, which gives this back portion here, the part that actually makes contact with your palm, some extra girth to help support your grip and add a good amount of stability. Then at the other end, these low buttons get your fingers close to the pad to help facilitate a more aggressive grip that is common with claw, since there is a large difference between the highest and lowest points, which helps to get your hand curled a little bit more. It's fairly short too, so it is easy to wrap your fingers around it like you would need to do to create this finger curl. Also, this low front gives a feeling of precision despite this large hump now that your fingers are more compact to the surface and operating closer to the same plane as the pad, instead of far away from the surface and a more floaty feeling. These are all very common design features seen across a wide variety of mice, namely the Z13 and S2, two classic Zowie shapes. So this isn't a particularly unique shape and it is quite reminiscent of these other two mice in hand. In fact, it is so similar that this mouse had the lowest adjustment time I've ever experienced, well besides the J33 SE of course, because everything carried directly over for me from these other shapes I've put so much time on. It was instantly homey and immediately natural to use. But what it does do differently is integrate the best of what these different designs do into one highly cohesive package. Much like the Z13, the Bolt's hump is rounded and smooth, so very cleanly fills your palm with no pressure points, unlike flat top mice like the S2 that are boxier and tend to isolate contact to very discrete regions of your palm. But unlike the Z13, the hump isn't so aggressively high and far back that it forces itself deep into your palm, instead is much more gently curved to achieve a more balanced feel. You can still fill your palm by flattening your hand down and wrapping around the hump which is highly stable or you can pull the hump into the back of your hand due to this more gentle slope, not impacting your mid palm as much with this style. And it even works well for my standard pincher style claw grip, since this flare is wide enough to squeeze with the edges of your palm and flat enough to not feel restrictive, all out the S2. So this hump is super versatile overall. It may start to venture into the potato territory because it isn't very specialized like the more aggressive designs are, but it is so balanced and so just neutral that it feels incredible for claw and is the perfect starting point for this style I feel. The only part that I have issue with on the shape is with the sides. The hump and button knight are perfect, but the sides are a little bit funky. They're completely flat with just a slight tilt to help with picking the mouse up and a bit of a rotation here at the middle. Then they also flare out quite prominently towards the front, which in combination with the flatness makes things awkward because it feels like your fingers end up fighting against these sides at times. For example, if you want to curl your fingers aggressively, there's nothing to really grab them since it's totally flat and you start to run into awkward angles here due to such a prominent flare. 
So here is where Zowie's and other claw shapes really start to catch up. This curvy, much more technical side curvature does a lot more to lock your grip in, as your fingers wrap around and grip onto these curves, as opposed to just relying on surface friction to create consistent finger placement, which in this case I feel leads to a less reliable grip. So this is also where the terrible coating comes into play, because I don't always hate flat sides. The Burst Pro and GPX, for example, both have quite flat sides, but I don't have an issue with either of them because their coatings are both fantastic. The GPX has a signature Logitech coating, and the Burst Pro is textured a little bit here to help your fingers grip in like grip tape does. So you can still work with these flat sides to get a secure finger position, as long as the coating is quality. The even better example of this is the S2 versus S2C. On the OG S2, I thought the sides were too flat and they made it hard to place my fingers properly, but the S2C felt near flawless to me now that my fingers are locked in on this more rubberized finish. So you absolutely cannot underestimate how much the grip of a mouse affects how the shape feels. It is such an important part of how your hand interacts with the mouse that is always critical to how the entire experience plays out shape in all. I guarantee that the size of the bolt would feel completely different with a different grip. That is all it will take. Still, despite my preference for curves and this appalling coating, these flat sides are actually not all that bad for me personally, because I have recently changed up my grip to something that works very naturally for the shape as a whole. And just before I got the bolt, I was putting in a lot of time trying to develop the Z13 and AIM trainers, and what I found is that the more relaxed I made my grip, the better it felt, and this translated in-game as well. I used to curl my fingers more and squeeze the mouse decently hard, but I started to recognize this pattern, so I revisited the different grips I used for specific mice, and the outside X is one of the first places I went, since this mouse does hard force a grip that is very comfortable and relaxed. I straighten out my fingers more, pull the mouse further towards the bottom of my palm, focusing on creating contact throughout this outer edge instead of the middle of my palm, and I pinch the hump with a more top-down angle on my thumb. Then, I copy the script over to the Z13, which felt perfect. It takes all the precision and stability of the Z13 and implements some of the comfort of an ergo, which I've now found out is mainly because of how I gripped them, not necessarily the asymmetric curves like I thought. This grip stitch works so well that I've been implementing it on every mouse that I can, especially the bolt, where it really shines. Because when you start to straighten out your fingers, this flare starts to make more sense. Just like I talked about with the M2K, when you extend your fingers out, they'll naturally follow a flared shape. So this wider front starts to make the mouse more comfortable because it matches this angle that your fingers naturally make. It does limit some of that precise feeling because the wider front does start to stretch your fingers out instead of make them compact and tight all close together, which can feel more responsive. But the buttons are so low, which I feel makes up for it easily, so it still feels great. This is a mouse that I broke an aim trainer PRs with and played just as well with in game. This extra width at the front may feel weird, but I haven't noticed it affecting my own performance in any meaningfully negative way. Still though, I would of course prefer thinner grips like the Z13, but the comfort trade-off here seems to be worth it in this case. Then of course the hump slope allows me to tuck it back and lock the mouse into the edge of my palm for all stability I'd ever need, which is super comfortable as well. Alright, now onto the general features. First up, the build quality is excellent. It doesn't feel like it's made out of the most high quality plastic, because once again, the coating is hot trash, but it feels solid in hand and fairly premium. Just not quite the level that companies like Logitech, Zowie, barring the occasional issue, and especially Vaxi do. These companies are definitely a tier above this, but again, it's not bad at all and feels fine to me. Also, there is a tiny bit of slide effects at the bottom here that I should mention, but I don't see how anyone could actually have issue with this in-game. It is so slight and you have to put a lot of force. Even Gorilla Grippers should be completely fine. I only noticed it while explicitly stress testing the mouse. Now for the wireless implementation, as far as I can tell, it's perfect. Feels just as good as any standard wired mouse I've tried. Still not quite as good as Logitech Wireless, I think those mice actually feel better than other wired options, but it's perfectly fine and feels very crisp. Also, I should note that I have been coming around to wireless and it's starting to be more important for me after putting so much time on the G303 SE and using the Bolt the past couple weeks. Good cables, like the C-Series cables, are still perfectly usable for me, but I'm starting to notice them a lot more recently. Maybe it's time to go full-time wireless, I don't know. Alright, anyway, battery life is also pretty impressive. It's been a little bit difficult to keep track of because I've had some minor issues with the software. The thing that actually affects the mouse, by the way, just annoying firmware update stuff. But from what I can tell, a week's worth of use using this mouse for a couple hours a day and leaving it on and letting the idle do its thing only depleted less than half the battery. So it has been very impressive as far as battery life goes. And this doesn't come with extra weight either. This mouse is only about 68 grams. Technically 67 for the black, I think, and 69 for the white. And it's balanced well, so it doesn't feel heavy or clunky at all. Of course, I'd always like to be a little lighter. Getting it down to at least 60 grams always feels fantastic, but it's totally fine, especially if you come from a normal weight mouse. 
Now the clicks feel great, but there is actually a pretty major issue. The M1 shell is a little bit loose and rattles a bit. It doesn't bother me at all, and I never notice it because I do put a little bit of weight on the buttons during my normal grip, which eliminates the rattle completely, and it makes them feel perfect. They have the nice chunky tactility that you expect from Kale 8.0s while also being pretty light and easily spammable. Plus there is little pre-travel and well-tensioned post-travel which is always very important for click feel. But if you do click your buttons from up top like I do sometimes when just using my desktop, it starts to feel pretty bad. Super unsatisfying and just terrible. So be careful if you use the clicks like this. This is going to be detrimental to the specific use case. Feet are solid as well. They are smooth with a decent amount of speed and a good tactile response from our textured surfaces. They're still not quite as good as aftermarket options like core pads, but I don't feel the need to replace these at all, even as someone who has aftermarket feet on everything I use. They're good, genuinely. Now these side buttons, they are weird. I don't know what the switches actually are, but they feel like slightly more tactile rubber domes, which I've never felt on a mouse button before. It is so strange. Definitely some library keyboard type B going on here. They are still usable though, since the buttons are large and well placed, so I don't actually have issues in game. But that stiff, poppy feel is so off putting when you use them frequently, which is a shame, so be careful if you spam your sides a lot. These could have been so much better with a better switch implementation, that is all they need. Alright, so overall, this mouse has been pretty disappointing for me, honestly. I love the shape, it is easily the most balanced shape out there for claw, I feel, and the most comfortable mouse right now for me that I can also aim very well with. But the coating is so bad that it's almost impossible to grip properly, which destroys my confidence completely. I will 100% be picking up some core pad grips for this mouse once they come out. They felt great on the G33 SE, so I hope they would be able to fix this one issue that I have and help me actually evaluate this mouse properly. Because as it stands now, this could be my number two mouse over the Z13C. When it works, it does feel better than this mouse. But I can't properly assess how reliable it is in its current state. I will definitely be posting an update on my final thoughts about this mouse's performance once I find a grip solution to see if it can live up to the potential I see here. But until then, I'll be keeping this mouse on my desk just to remind myself that it exists and keep using the Z13, G33 SE, and M2K because it's just not quite there yet. It needs some mods, which is so frustrating. All right, thank you for watching. Sorry again for not getting this out on the embargo date. More content is coming soon. Woogie 2 review plus other pads coming soon.